In this example, we're going to see how we can use u substitution as an initial step on an integral to turn something that's not a rational function into a rational function when we can then use partial fraction decomposition. So here I have an integral of e to the 2x all over e to the 2x plus 3e to the x plus 2. Clearly not a rational function. I don't just have powers of x divided by powers of x. Um, but it turns out a u substitution can help turn this into a rational function. Um, so let's see how that might work. Notice that I have all these, these um, e to the x's sort of appearing in here. I have an e to the 2x here and an e to the 2x here and e to the x down here. But what if we let u be e to the x? Then my du will be e to the x dx. So let's notice that that numerator of e to the 2x I could also write as e to the x times e to the x. The e to the 2x that I have in the denominator, another way of writing that would be e to the x squared. So remember with exponent rules, when I have um, the same base here, like e to the x times e to the x, that can become e to the x plus x, or um, e to the 2x. And when I do a power to a power, I multiply those things. So that's how e to the x squared becomes e to the 2x. So if we take what we have here and write it like this, so e to the x times e to the x dx all over e to the x squared plus 3 e to the x plus 2. I can see how using this u substitution of u equals e to the x is going to turn this denominator into u squared plus 3u plus 2. And looking at the numerator, I can take one of those e to the x's and make it u, and the other e to the x dx part will be my, excuse me, my du. So I'm going to have u du all over u squared plus 3u plus 2. Now this is a rational function. And we can think about using our techniques for dealing with rational functions. Now you could do a trig substitution on that after completing the square, but it will be easier to use partial fraction decomposition. So notice that I do have a proper rational function here. I have u over u squared plus 3u plus 2, and I can factor that denominator. So that's going to factor into u plus 1 and u plus 2, so I'm going to have nice simple linear factors. So I know that this form would be a over u plus 1 plus b over u plus 2. So I can clear those fractions and have u is equal to a times u plus 2 plus b times u plus 1. Okay, so we know when we have, when we have these um, just nice simple linear ones, it's going to be um, pretty quick to find um, our values of a and b by just plugging in some nice convenient values. So I could plug in u equals negative 2. So I'd have negative 2 equals 0 here plus negative b. So I see that b is going to be equal to 2. And then if I plug in another convenient value here, like u equals negative 1, I'm going to have negative 1 equals a times negative 1 plus 2. So that's just going to be a and plus 0 for the other term. So I see a is equal to negative 1. Okay. So with those two values, we can rewrite our integral here. So notice. I'm going to have here my integral of u du um, over u squared plus 3u plus 2 is equal to an integral of a over u plus 1, so that'll be negative 1 over u plus 1, plus b of 2 over u plus 2 du. So we see how that drastically simplified what we were working with. So I'm going to have negative log of the absolute value of u plus 1 plus 2 log of the absolute value of u plus 2 plus c. But remember that we were letting u be equal to e to the x. So I can plug in my e to the x and get my final answer here. So remember we were trying to integrate um, e to the 2x all over e to the 2x plus 3 e to the x plus 2 dx. This equals negative log e to the x plus 1 plus 2 log e to the x plus 2 plus c. 
And we can certainly leave it in that form. We don't have to use log rules to um, simplify it or anything like that. So we can leave it just like this. Okay, so we see how using a combination of u substitution and then partial fractions um, made this uh, integral much simpler for us to handle.